Alright, so first I'm going to show you just how to do it. So when you start your session or whatever, you're going to turn the power on. And you're going to give it about a minute. Most amps should be good with a minute. Okay, so after about a minute, you can just turn the standby switch from standby to on. And then you're all ready to go. But once you're finally done playing, you're going to do the reverse. You're going to turn standby switch back to standby. And this is a little up to different people's opinions, but from what I figured out, I'd say about 30 seconds um, after you turn the switch to standby, you should turn the power off. Okay, so after 30 seconds, just turn the power off, and you're done. That's the quick, easy, what you should do. Next up, I'll do why, and also problems with doing it wrong, and the science behind it, a little bit of that. Okay, so now I'm going to try to quickly go over why you do it, and what happens when you turn the switches, and what doing them wrong uh, can result in. And first off, I'm just going to explain like what the switches actually do. So when you turn the power on from here to here, um, what you're doing is heating up the filament in the tube. The filament is the cathode in this circuit that I'm going to describe. Um, so basically, you know, it's like the it's like the little piece of metal in light bulbs that lights up. What happens is you're applying a um, a charge to this piece of metal, and it heats up, and it reaches a point of incandescence, which means that it is emitting light. Um, if it weren't in the vacuum that is in the vacuum tube, it would burn because oxygen in the air would bind with it and something like that. But because it's in the vacuum, there's no oxygen to bind with. The metal just heats up to incandescence, and what happens is electrons basically um, boil off, is not a very good word, but they come off. They come off of the cathode, the metal, that heats up and gets bright, and it creates a cloud of electrons around the cathode. Um, so that's what happens when you turn the power on. When you turn the standby on, what you're doing is you are charging a separate piece of metal that's connected to the inside of the tube. Um, you're giving it a positive charge. And uh, what this does is causes the electrons that are in the cloud around the incandescent cathode to be attracted towards the, the positively charged um, other piece, the anode. Um, and uh, yeah, it creates a one-way flow of the current. But what's important about this is that it's, it's what I learned today, was that it's a, it's a two-step process. Um, what happens is the cathode, it creates that um, electron cloud around it, and then the anode, once it's positively charged, takes the electrons from that cloud, as opposed to directly from the cathode. Okay, so keeping in mind that two-step process, of the cathode becoming in incandescent, creating an electron cloud, that's step one, and then the anode being positively charged and sucking the electrons from the cloud to itself, that's step two. Um, I'm going to go into um, what, what are the bad things that can happen, or rather used to happen um, with a lot of the older um, tubes. So first off, say I were to turn on the power, that is, um, power the cathode and the standby, that is, positively charge the anode at the same time. Well, what happens 
is because the cathode takes time to heat up, which is what that minute is for when I turn the power on without turning the standby to on, um, if the positive charge of the anode is exposed to the cathode before it reaches incandescence, instead of pulling electrons from a cloud that surrounds what uh, the which surrounds the uh, cathode when it's incandescent there is no cloud if it's not heated up all the way so instead it just strips the um, electrons from the actual cathode so instead of being a two strut process where the cathode um, emits electrons into a cloud and then the anode takes the electrons from that cloud um, in the vacuum what's actually happening is the cathode is not heated up so it doesn't have the electron cloud and the anode's powered on so it's just ripping um, the electrons off of the actual cathode and this causes you know unnecessary wear and tear to your amp or to the tubes um, to the actual cathode is what's happening it messes with it it just it, it wears it out so that's why you want to have that um, minute for the the tubes to heat up and um, create that cloud before the anode is powered and starts, you know, absorbing electrons. That is the uh, purpose of that. The flip side of this problem is what if I turn the power on, um, but instead of turning the standby on a minute later, I just let it sit with the power on for a really long time. Well, what happens with this is the um, the cathode heats up, it gets to incandescence, it starts, it creates its cloud of electrons around it, um, but since the anode's not activated to suck the electrons from that cloud, what happens is it, it kind of just, it, it's, I don't really understand the science behind it, but um, there's too much of the electron, of the electron cloud, and it, and, it, and I've heard uh, some of the sources say like, if you do, if you leave the power on for 20 or 30 minutes with the standby off, um, with the standby in the, the position it's in now, um, you'll you get something called cathode poisoning, um, which can also mess up your tube. Um, so yeah, that's another risk is you don't want to let the power be on too long. And I think this is important because a lot of people will say that if you need to take a break, just turn off, turn turn the standby um, to standby mode like it is right now, and uh, leave the power on so that if you need to come back, you can just flip standby on. And it'll be really quick. And I've even seen this in um, in actual manuals for some of these, suggesting that as a use, but. Apparently, um, if you leave the power on too long without the standby um, in the on position, it's just going to create, it's going to give your tube cathode poisoning, as it's called.